Hi, good morning, and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. Now, I, I want to say we were meant to do this at 8 a.m. London time, and we've gone early, and I'm sorry that most of these webinars nowadays, actually, we do go early. It's just super busy, you know, in a good way, so uh, my apologies. Also, um, I spent most of the day yesterday at Cambridge judging some um, student posters and talks, so... Um, some of the some of the slides might reflect that slightly as well but let me go forward with this anyway and um as you say as you, as you know the um what we try to do is answer questions that have come in during the week so don't forget the zp academy um if you're technically curious um then there's a couple of free um uh courses on the zp academy um obviously there's these webinars we do these webinars um once a week today's quite a long list actually so i need to go quicker um, there are collaborations. Some of these collabor some of the questions that are coming in, actually, um, especially when you come in from academia, if you're really interested in in accessing things like our cortisol sensor, we need formal collaborations, either just big projects because um, you have the funding, or um, big EU projects um, because they bring funding um, with them as well. Uh, we do offer jobs. We have been recruiting recently. We do have our ZP developers own website. We do have our workshops. Workshops are super important. Um, and I'll talk about those um, shortly. Oh, in fact, here we go. So just to say on workshops, um, we do have a couple of workshops. Now, if people are significant clients um, or customers of ours, um, we do actually um, offer up free workshop places as well. So some of the questions that have come in this week are actually from somebody who is, that's, you know, is significant and we've welcomed them to um, a workshop place. So there's workshops in November in Norway and there's also workshops in the UK in November as well so just check out these links and these links by the way I will definitely put them underneath this webinar as soon as we finished um, I'll start um, copying them across and um, we do have our S cubed conferences as well um, if you want to have more of an impact we're going to do workshops in front of these um, conferences but we do have our S cubed conference in June this will be on um, the commercialization of electrochemical biosensors and electrochemical assays and we do have our s cubed conference in Norway in 2025 on um, precision agriculture. And there is an early bird registration for the UK one. I think the UK one might be interesting, actually, because some of the people asking questions this week, I'd like them to come to workshops, but it may be good to come to that conference because the conference and workshop then is much more um, impactful. All right. Anyway, let's go forward. Um, I did say at the, the first slide we do do webinars. Um, and these webinars are not just, as I am today, talking a lot. Actually, we do do live demos. And for the Julie webinar, for example, I have something like five engineers involved. You know, they all turn up, they all do their presentations and demonstrations. So we have a webinar on Julie. Um, there is a link here so you can find all these webinars. They're free. So Julie, cloud database management system, really important. Sense it all. Quickest way to getting to market. Um with electrochemical assay and sensor ideas and we're going to do a data sciences one in india and we've also got our food sense um monthly webinar um, as well which is food sense is our kind of quality um system for measuring the quality in food so questions this week I'll talk about cortisol sensors wearable lactate sensors which actually several of these questions two five and six um different people but related sensors in micro well somebody was just wondering how many sensors we could get into a micro well um somebody else also wants a bespoke spe um screen printed electrodes and i will talk about that now question five is how to run a generation one and a generation two glucose sensor and lactate sensor and also how to run a sodium ph and potassium it's really really worth saying that um when somebody's a significant customer we try to get them along to the workshops because this this question five is all from the same person so you can see that they've bought all of these products um and if we can get them in the workshop, we just cover it all, you know, in one go, let's say. But we'll have a go at covering this today. Probably just worth saying generation one and generation two are amperometric. And sodium, pH and potassium are um, potentiometric. And you need to use open circuit potential measurements on your um, instrument. Question six is about Prussian blue SPEs. And I will cover that um, at the end as well. So question number one. This is always a really disappointing answer, but we do have a cortisol sensor but we're really only using the cortisol sensor on significant programs. You know, we don't just make it available on the website because um, it's a very valuable sensor. I mean, it's had easily a million euros invested into it um, so far. And so we do ask people to 
in, get involved with us in a very significant way. We will do it with um, academic groups as well, but then it's it got to be on a big, you know, sort of European style project. You know, I sort of saying Horizon Twenty Twenty, and because we are in Norway and the UK, it means we can participate um, in European projects and Anglo European projects as well. So I'm sorry to be disappointed on that, but we will use it and help people with it, but it does have to be on a significant um, program. Question number two is about lactate sensors. Somebody wants to make a lactate sensor for the sweat analysis. Um, again, I mean, the business model at ZP is we do contract development, contract manufacturing. So we have, um, this is a slightly different note, but we do have significant clients who are um, building human products using the lactate technologies that we have at ZP. So I have a lot of confidence that um, of, of all this working, let's say, and not you know, and first-hand confidence. Um, this person's asking really about sweat. So I'm going to talk today about making sweat patches and putting these onto people. Um, and I'll put a quick link to the sweat patch here. So there's a list of technologies that this person needs. They need the sensor, they need the sweat patch, and they need some electronics. I mean, they do ask at, at the end, we can put all this together for people, but actually that's a, that's a program. And these are not insignificant programs either. Um, I mean, just to say that at ZP, we, you know, we do have um, wire sensors. This is like Abbott, Dexcom and Medtronic. We do have micro needles. So ZP was the development house behind a company called PK Vitality. Um, and we um, own over something like 50 patents on micro needles, um, non-invasive. And um, this is the kind of sweat analysis. We also do implanted as well. This is our implanted system. Um, I haven't got a scale on here, but actually this gets implanted um, incredibly into fish. Um, and so we do it both in glucose and cortisol um, manner. I do want to get back to the sweat analysis because somebody's like, well, you know, they're interested in doing um, the analysis of lactate and sweat. So you need a generation one lactate sensor. You need a sweat patch and you need um, some electronics. I will flag up the electronics in a minute. Uh, but this is the work that we did do in-house where we especially assembled it. We did this in a kind of proof of principle um, style project um, where we did this. Um, it was quite a while ago, but um, and we were able to make Bluetooth connection with the um, laptop. And um, we were able to actually get data off the subject here where actually they went into this kind of um, strained state and um, we were able to get a lactate signal. So it was really good that... Um, and we were also able to confirm what we were seeing actually with um, literature as well. I've put a link here to hardware sensors and sweat patch. So these I think are the things that you need in order to do the work yourself. If you're a company and you've got the budget, then it's definitely worth um, having ZP, um, let's say involved. But if you're a, a, if you've got more limited budgets and sometimes like academic budgets, then, you know, bypass ZP and just start buying the hardware and getting into it yourself. If you're really not sure about lactate sensing and you're confused, I can't overemphasize these workshops that we do. There's two, um, two in November, one in Norway and one in the UK. So those would definitely be the places to kind of get that sort of crash course in it. We have recently released a new um, set of electronics. This, this, is, this is the actual electronics themselves. This is the kind of scale of things that will help you make um, a wearable um, lactate sensor. And it's naughty of me because I realize I haven't quite put the link in here. Um, but we call it the single purpose biosensor circuit. Um, most of this PCB is actually what, what I would call a developer's board or a breakout board. It's allow, it, it, so it allows you to make um, sensor connection with the electronics and it allows you to kind of program or play with the settings um, through a cable as well. Um, so that would be the electronics that we're now recommending. Question number three is about sensors in micro well. So... I understand that people, this particular person was pretty interested in, in measuring three analytes in a micro well. I mean, at ZP, we're very interested in cell culture, fermentation, precision fermentation. Um, so we are interested in this kind of thing. And so I, we understand that's why we're so keen to actually put um, sensors essentially into micro wells. Um, so we're, we're slowly getting there, if I can put it that way. Um, so when you look at our micro well, um, I mean, at ZP, we do electrochemical assays. So what you're looking at here is essentially three electrodes. The central one is the important one for us. I call it the working electrode, but 
in reality, when you're talking about sensors, I should really call this the um, the sensing electrode. So we have a sensing electrode, a reference electrode, and a counter electrode. And in order to do three analytes, you'd actually need three of those. But as you can see, we've only got one of them. So the first thing is um, we will want to, at the moment, we just make the bare electrodes available on the website. We could start turning them into pH, um, for example, dissolved oxygen, um, glucose type sensors. But again, it's like we will either have to take our slow time with it or we can do it as part of, of a pay program. The reason that um, we haven't put three electrodes in there, just out of interest, is, I mean, to run 96 um, wells like that, we need essentially 288 wires. Now, we use PCB, so these are not wires as such, they're, they're tracks. Um, but for then, then for every extra, like, kind of working electrode, or sensing electrode, you have to have 96, and then you have to have another 96. So if I just do crude maths on that, call it 100. Um, 388 for two electrodes, and um, 488 for three um, sensing electrodes. So it's it's almost like it's enough at the moment that we're at, we're, that we've actually have to route this net number of um, wires. You know, maybe adding 100 extra and another 100 on top of that is not so hard, but that's just the reality of it. So the, at the reality at the moment is we've got the board. Um, it's a bare electrode. It's, um, to, we can functionalize it into um, sensors. Um, I don't think we make them available on the website. It's something we would do as part of a project. And um, if you did want to do three things, we would literally have to do a new board with three um, sensing electrodes in there. And then we would have to convert them up into pH, um, glucose, um, maybe dissolved oxygen, depending on what the people are actually interested in. Question number four was really about um, doing a custom design or not custom design, do a custom manufacturing or a bespoke manufacturing for somebody. I will talk about this. I, I cover up a lot of the details here because, um, you know, I just want to protect, the you know, protect um, information. Um, but I do want to talk about, um, I will talk about this. Um, one of the biggest, well, one of the most regular questions we get is, um, can you do me a, a bespoke or a custom screen printing um, either on ceramic or on um, polymer um, and the quick answer is we can the problem I have sometimes is that people um, don't really well like there's something called manufacturing readiness level so manufacturing readiness level can kind of run from one to nine so at ZP um, our best-selling um, screen printed electrode is our hyper value carbon electrode it is definitely a manufacturing readiness level number nine because we make it in high volume. We make it all the time. You know, this is a sort of a daily occurrence with us. The problem with, with the screen printing world a lot is that you will see catalogs full of lots of different electrodes. But what you don't know is that they're actually making those so sporadically. It's not really a product. It's kind of batch manufacturing. And to have really good manufacturing control, it's often good to have continuous manufacturing. You know, so at least you're doing this on a regular occurrence because it makes sure that all the tools are set up, all the screens are good, the operators are fully trained. So um, it does happen anyway that when you when you're then asked to make a special piece, what you're really got to understand is that they're not at manufacturing level number nine. You're probably more like manufacturing readiness level number five, because when you first make it that's the first time you ever made it so that's not really manufacturing in fact i heard somebody use the term um in at cambridge university yesterday isotyping so you've got prototyping isotyping and then product so i would definitely describe this as um when you want a, a bespoke piece you're really at that kind of very kind of isotyping phase and i'll put a quick link here to manufacturing readiness level so i do say that you know if you check out the quality on these electrodes, you can go in and have a look at the photos. You'll see that they're really nice um, electrodes. And we get at ZP, we get really nice repeatability on our electrodes. So if you come to one of our webinars on food sense, you'll see us doing live demonstrations using um, electrodes made by ZP. And we're able to kind of give um, 
results um, in uh, real time in those the webinars. Software, there is a webinar. Um, the one of the original slides at the very beginning of this, be, um, there was a slide about come to our free webinars. Um, this is one that we and did um, this, in September. But what's important about it is we're doing a, these webinars, um, we're doing live results, and we're getting, we're giving the results in real time. Um, That's because we have ultimate confidence in our electrodes. And why is that? Because we're at manufacturing readiness level number nine. The first the time you sort of send the design into a company to... um, and you say, oh, make this, they're really not at manufacturing readiness level number nine. They're more like five um, because it's the first time they've made it. So it's really important to understand where your manufacturing is when you start doing a request for bespokeness. The reason that we're so um, good at manufacturing um, of our standard products is because we do a lot of um, tests on our electrodes. I think we're the most testing company of our screen printer electrodes and our biosensors, at least in this kind of development market. We're definitely the guys doing the most test and the most statistical analysis to make sure that, you know, we understand what our relative standard deviations are on our products. And they're really um, quite good. And so sometimes we do a lot of development work for people and that's because we're, our electrodes, we, if we need to get a signal versus concentration kind of graph, you know, we can do it really quickly. We're doing one at the moment where we're just going to um, do a, what we call a micro project where they have a target analyte and we're going to just do it on our bare electrodes. We're just going to do it by voltammetry, but we're able to do it in something like 16 hours because the underlying electrodes are so repeatable that we don't need to... Um, look at our data and wonder whether it's working or not and also the sort of parallel nature of our setups You know, we do a lot of testing in parallel means we can do this very quickly But anyway, in the end the reason that we're so fast is because the uh, Manufacturing readiness levels of our electrodes are so high um, and it really helps us um, with our um, Quality Now back to the original inquiry. So, you know, we get this inquiry and there's a couple of things that are kind of um, There's a few there's quite a few things wrong with this design and I think it really needs a redesign and a bit of a redevelopment and then start manufacturing it. Um, it's overall size. I can understand why somebody has um, something like a 51 millimeter length along here. I can understand why, because you can go and dip it into something and then your sensing area as well away from your, um, your electrical contact. But the sheer length on it means that your manufacturing density is really low so this actually will be quite an expensive piece to manufacture people come to often companies like zp because they want to have um low cost well to get low cost one of the one of the levers that you can pull is actually to make your um, electrodes actually smaller this this guy is basically just too big um so that needs a bit of a redesign if it can't be redesigned it needs to be you know we need to think this through a little bit more um the other problem I have is that um, we've got a, let's say, a spec sheet, but really the, um, the, the, the print is so rough, we wouldn't want to make this piece. Um, so all the spec do is that they, they, they all stack up. And then when you actually look at what the final piece is, this is such a rough print. You, you would not want to manufacture this. In fact, I wouldn't manufacture it. So that there's a problem that the spec sheet ends up giving something that's actually quite rough and this is a thing that you know i think people again think that screen printing oh you just send your designs in and you just get something back that's beautiful and it's not the case so this is not made by us but we wouldn't want to make this because there's something fundamentally wrong with it so my suggestion is on this one that this really needs a review and a redesign and then we could manufacture it so we would have to do that as a what they call an nre a non-recurring engineering um cost um so um, we're happy to do it, but we would have to have a redesign or a re-review on that. Question number five. Um, again, I've this person is a significant client of ours. We've uh, we've invited them. So if you are a significant client, we do invite you to our workshops. Our workshops really accelerate your understanding. Uh, we have two in November, one in the UK and one in Norway. I prefer people to sometimes come to the Norwegian one because it's it's where our more significant um, manufacturing and development is. But Sometimes it's easier to fly into London or, you know, there are more people coming to London for natural reasons. I say in London, but it's actually in Coventry, but the train between London and Coventry is pretty um, fast. 
and I'm testing with lactic acid. So this is all really about lactic acid. First thing I want to say is that ZP, the enzymes that we are using are um, sensitive to L-lactic and L-lactate. I am definitely saying L-lactic and L-lactate. We are sensitive to these molecules. Um, and the reason being is um, humans and other higher sort of mammalian organisms, um, when we go into this anaerobic uh, respiration, it's L-lactic we do. There is a D-lactic, but we're not talking about D-lactic today. Um, ZP has worked on D-lactic sensors and D-lactic enzymes, but it's not what we're, we're talking about today. Um, what is the form of lactic acid in the sweat? The thing is that um, lactic acid is an acid. So in anything that's kind of mildly alkali or alkali, it's going to basically give up its protons. So even if I am doing a test, let's say I've got a test that I'm doing a YouTube video in it, and m most of the time on YouTube, we're testing at pH 7.2. That's because pH 7.2 um, is kind of reflective of the blood. Um, so even if I add in L-lactic acid, um, in fact, what it's going to do is going to deprotonate and become lactate. I just nothing I could do about it. This is just the way um, the it's an it's um, an acid group. It's going to give up its proton. It's going to exchange that, and it's probably going to become sodium lactate because um, in most buffers, because they're trying to kind of so lots of buffers are trying to reflect blood. You've got lots of sodium chloride in there. So if, even if I add lactic acid, what I'm really forming is citrus sat sodium lactate. The reason that um, I made an old video once upon a time, I said, look, our sensor doesn't really respond to lactate. And I realized it was because the client was actually using D-sodium lactate. D-sodium lactate. They're using the wrong enantiomer. So I just need to be sure that people understand that we, when we're testing, are using... We tend now, you just get into a groove, let's say, you know, um, and so we, we are testing with L-lactic acid, but even though we're adding L-lactic acid, because of the pH, um, first of all, the pH of sweat, I just looked it up, was about 6.3. So this means that um, lactic acid is just deprotonating and it's L-lactate in sweat. And in blood, the pH of blood is about 7.2. So again, um, lactic acid is deprotonated and it's lactate. So... Um, the reason I made a comment once in a video about lactic and lactate is because I actually I had a client who was using D-sodium lactate and they really need to be using L-lactate or L-lactic acid. Um, just for anyone who's not a chemist, I'm actually describing here is molecules can have chirality. Some of them are left-handed and some of them are right-handed um, and you can't put the left on the right. And it says something about the specificity of enzymes that they know the difference between left and right. Um, really active sites. People ask sometimes about the specificity. Once you start using enzymes, they become really quite specific. Um, you know, that's, I, I can't, I'm just thinking about oxidase enzymes actually in particular, that they are actually very um, specific. I was just thinking you've got to be very careful with general generalizations. They do want to know how to run these Gen 1 Gen 2 lactic and, and glucose sensors, and they want to know how to run their sodium, potassium, and pH sensors. Um, Gen 1, you run it at 650 millivolts. Um, you can see lots of, I mean, this is really nice data. Um, this is just data we literally got this week um, on one of our wire electrodes. Um, it's almost, I mean, it's so fast to respond. I'm really sort of pleased with it. Anyway, we run these um, Gen 1 lactate and um, glucose sensors at um, pH, sorry, at uh, potential 650 millivolts. I suppose I should say this is amperometric. So on many potential stats, you can choose the chrono amper amperometry setting. There's no preconditioning for us. We just apply 650 millivolts. We generally have a save rate of one second. And the way we actually do the experiment, if people come to our workshop, and I really hope this person does come to a workshop because then we can just do it with them. In fact, we had a workshop in Grenoble last week, which was excellent because somebody had already had our sensors. So they had a little bit of a sense of things. Then they came and did the work with us and it got exactly the same results. It was such a nice affirmation for them and confirmation that um, what they were doing was working. We generally put these kind of sensors into a beaker. Um, first of all, there's no glucose. We let it sort of break in for about 100 seconds. Then we start adding in glucose or lactic acid and um, the sensors respond accordingly. So... I mean, especially with glucose, which is the most robust system, um, thanks to the robustness of the enzyme, it works really quite well. 
if you're working on a gen 2 glucose or gen 2 lactate sensor the potential is not 600 um, 650 millivolts and i need to correct this it's um i put here millivolts this is not this is 0.125 volts or 125 millivolts and i need to drag myself slightly out of the frame here so in gen 2 gen 2 sensors um generally work at lower potential and the gen 1 is working at 650 millivolts and the gen 2s are working at 125 millivolts i realized i've got an extra m in here so my apologies for that um this is what the data should look like um this is off a um actually off a gen 2 lactate sensor so um at this point now it's running as a reduction rather than an oxidation so this is the break in and then every time we add the lactate um the magnitude of the signal is getting better people think oh it's getting smaller no 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 it's just it's just the direction the current is flowing in um it's one of those things about electrochemistry that you most of the time you expect signals going to go up um, on this on the let's say on the display because in electrochemistry we can have a signal that goes both in a positive current direction and a negative current direction this happens to just have the signal going in a negative current direction um but this is the data that we get off our data sheet um and it's 125 millivolts to do that um glucose sensors that i recommend if you're starting off i recommend you starting off on a g1 but we've just been getting so good at making our wire sensors recently so our wire sensors are much more sort of um, if you're trying to make transdermal um, met, um, systems, transdermal means you kind of go through the skin. Now, when we the stuff we sell on the website is not intended for human use. Let's be very clear about that. Um, but when you look at many of the kind of CGM um, products on the market, they're really um, transdermal sensors. And so we do have a transdermal configuration. The data I was just showing just came off a recent um, batch of um, those sensors. Now, when it comes to sodium, potassium and pH, these are potentiometric sensors. I definitely cover um, a good uh, potentiometric sensors in our workshops. Um, on the potentiostat, you really want to be finding um, open C o sorry, OCP, open circuit potential, is the methodology. The reason I say open circuit potential is because essentially we're measuring the potential between two of the electrodes, um, but it's at very high impedance. So it's a theoretically no currents meant to flow. Um, now I've got a bit of a video on the um, website about this and I definitely have a link to this in a minute. But you can literally see that in this case, I think we were measuring pH and we're just moving the sensor. Um, now I don't like the way I did that because I'm basically carrying pH from one kind of vial to the next vial. But we can see the signal sort of changing in real time. So there's the first signal, now it's kind of going down and settling a bit more. Once it's hit plateau, I'm probably then gonna move it across again. Um, and then the signal should respond accordingly. Let's have a little look. Yeah. So here we're measuring with open circuit potential. There's not many parameters to play with open circuit potential. The only other parameter I would suggest is the save rate. Save rate doesn't really matter, but let's say you know one second save rate is fine. Sometimes, when you're moving from vessel to vessel like this, you can end up getting noise because you're basically going dry. I'm doing this quite fast, but sometimes you can get noise. So you can pause the saving in order so that you don't actually get all this noise because the noise will really kind of confuse you. There is a pause button on the software, um, but in this video, I was actually being quick enough that, but if you do get a lot of noise, then just pause the software whilst you move and then restart so you don't get noise because the noise will just confuse you and make you think that things are not working but i'm sure they're working perfectly fine um and then here i can see myself shifting around um between vessels quite a lot uh, so um the quick answer is generation one and generation two glucose and lactate sensors use a poise potential of 650 millivolts um generation two i hope i didn't confuse then generation two lactate and glucose use 125 millivolts and then sodium, potassium, pH, these are open circuit potentials. So they're a different class, let's say, of method files. And if you're confused, really, please come to the workshops. Um, we have offered a free place to this particular person because they bought so much stuff. Question number six is about Prussian blue screen printed electrodes. So we do make a um, Prussian blue screen printed electrode. 
um, and um, the person sent in a photo. The quick answer is we do do electro deposition of the Prussian blue. So yeah, it is Prussian blue that you can see slightly deposited on our counter and reference. Um, don't worry about it. This is how we do it, and this is you know these these actually work. But your quick answer, the quick answer to your question is yes, we do do electrochemical deposition. Um, there's many Prussian blue, so let's say products on the market, but they really don't have Prussian blue in them. They're not once you do CV on them. There's no there's no Prussian blue there. But these we the way we do it, we definitely know there's Prussian blue on it. This is the way we do it, um, and it definitely works in these types of applications. So question number one, cortisol sensor. I'd love to work on the cortisol sensor, but we do need a significant project. If you're in academia, then you know we need to be like a sort of Horizon 2020 or you know a Marie Curie where we really are funded on that project. Um, wearable lactate sensors. I have listed out all the hardware sensors in micro wells. At the moment, those are just bare electrodes. Um, to put three sensors in there, we have to do a new design. Um, be really careful. This is just in general about. Um, managing your expectations when it comes to getting custom screen printed electrodes done. The reason being is, you know, when we make our electrodes and we make them a high volume, we're, we're at manufacturing radius level number nine. But really, the product that I was shown in that thing is not the quality that we would want to be involved with. And it's that sort of manufacturing readiness level number five, I would suggest. Um, running um gen one and gen two um lactate sensors glucose sensor i have discussed it and sodium and potassium sorry sodium ph and potassium i've also discussed that and then number six yes we do do the prussian blue by electro deposition um, and that's why you can see that on those other two electrodes as well but go ahead it'll be fine as they say because we do this all the time okay so i want to say thank you very much for that um if you've got any questions from zp uh, first of all, I'm going to put any links of today's videos up onto the YouTube channel and um, these links will help you get back to the information and don't forget to contact us if you have any questions. Okay, thanks very much.